In today's video, we are going to talk about my first impressions on the rules for the Insidious Infiltrators, the White Dwarf Tyranids Combo Patrol list. Let's do this. Alright, so I was actually planning on kind of covering this one next week, maybe with a Warhammer Community article, but some kind soul, I don't want to shout them out here because maybe they don't appreciate that, but you know who you are, thank you very much, has shared these rules with me over on Twitter two days ago, or so I could have made this video way earlier, but I completely missed that, and now I'm here talking about these rules. It is going to be a super fun combo patrol, I've obviously not played any games yet, but my plan for now is to release the Strike Team Solarian full review next week, as well as this one if I can get enough games in. Usually my testing methodology for combo patrols these days is I have to at least play a combo patrol seven times against seven different combo patrols to really kind of gouge a few different matchups to get a good idea of how they are against more elite combo patrols, against more swarmy combo patrols and so on so I can give you a proper opinion. Now my friends are not always available and thus this takes a little bit of time but I'm going to try my best. Now with that out of the way, what does the Insidious Infiltrators Combo Patrol have to offer? Is it simple enough so you can just have a new tutorial box with Strike Team Solarian against Insidious Infiltrators? Spoiler alert, no it's not. But it's still a fun looking Combo Patrol nonetheless. And I'm going to explain why it's not a good tutorial Combo Patrol mix uh, compared to just playing Death Watch against something else that is simple like Orcs or something. So first up we have obviously our army ability, that's just Shadow and the Warp. It's basically what you expect. There's really nothing to comment on here. Shadow and the Warp can be very strong. It can completely whiff. It really depends on your opponent's roles, on your opponent's uh, leadership skills. So whether their army is good at leadership or not. And yeah, it's just, if you've been playing Tyranids, you exactly know what to expect from Shadow and the Warp. Now for your Neurolictor on the other side, we have a few very interesting enhancements. We have Neurogoat, which says... In your command phase, select one friendly Tyranids unit within 12 inches of the bearer. Until the start of the next command phase, you can reroll charge rolls made for that unit, and each time a model in that unit makes an attack, you can reroll the hit roll. This is going to be extremely strong in a list that is only running melee. I don't know if you're going to use it on your Lictor at all, or if you're going to try to focus on your von Rhein Sleepers, but I can absolutely see this one being very strong. And very useful especially since if you're not getting into melee you are left very vulnerable and you're go probably going to die. Next up we have Psionic Phantoms. This one reads once per battle round when the bearer is selected as the target of one or more shooting attacks made by models from an enemy unit it can use this enhancement. If it does it can make a normal move up to six inches. If the bearer is then no longer visible to that enemy unit roll 1d6 on a 1 through 3 the enemy models targeting the bearer can select new targets for their attacks. On a 4 to 6, the models targeting the bearer cannot select new targets for their attacks and so do not make any attacks these phase. So this one is incredibly strong. Usually, whenever you prevent someone from shooting, for example with the Nurgle's Gift Stratagem from the Chaos Space Marines, your opponent always gets to choose a new target because you cannot choose that target anymore and thus you pick a new one. This one specifically states that you can actually lose your shots, and that is incredible. So if you're expecting to get Alpha Strike, especially if you expect to play against a combo patrol that specifically rewards your opponent from taking out your Warlord, this one is going to be vital. So some combo patrols explicitly have secondary objectives that kind of reward your opponent from just taking them out, your Warlord or your leader choice or characters altogether, and against those lists, Psionic Phantoms is going to be excellent. So one is a little bit more defensive, one is a little bit more offensive. I think both of them have their place and I think both of them are quite strong actually. Especially with the additional clause with Psionic Phantoms that your opponent can actually lose shots and offensive capabilities on a 50-50 chance. It's really good. Next up we have our secondary objectives and these ones are kind of contrary to each other, like completely contrary to each other, which is fun. So first up, we have Alpha Predation. Um, in the first battle round, in which the enemy warlord is destroyed, you score a number of victory points depending on which battle round it is as shown in the table below. So if you kill the enemy warlord in the first two rounds, you are getting a juicy 15 victory points. That usually means if uh, you're not completely screwing up on the main objectives and if you're holding a few of them for enough turns, you basically cannot lose. There is almost no secondary objective 
they can even get to 15 victory points, let alone close to it. Most secondary objectives on average are going to score you six victory points if you're really good in combat patrol, or if you have one of those a do or die 10 victory points or nothing, those can score 10 as well. But 15 is very, very rare. Now, granted, you're usually not going to kill an enemy warlord within the first two turns, but there are some combat patrols where it's really good to take this one. For example, the ones where the leader or the warlord is completely separate. The new rumor Dark Angels combat patrol, for example, has a Gravis captain. And a Gravis captain cannot attach to anything in that box. And Gravis units, usually we don't know the rules yet, cannot be put into Deep Strike without any shenanigans. And that means that you can easily target that one and realistically take it out. Then there are other combo patrols where you need to take a little bit more time to actually carefully read what, it, what they say. Because Orcs, for example, also have a Warlord that is separate, that cannot attach to anything and is thus very vulnerable. But your opponent can just leave it in Deep Strike because of an additional enhancement. And they can leave it in deep strike until turn three and thus deny you five victory points for sure. And it's going to be very, very difficult to then score even those 10 victory points. And you're probably going to be leaning towards five. So there are shenanigans and there are specific lists that this is very strong against, but you need to still pay attention. And then we have left to last. And this one is completely contrary. As I said, while the enemy warlord is not destroyed, you score four victory points each time you destroy an enemy unit. This one can score you 12 victory points realistically, especially if your opponent has a ton of units. Most notably here, I would say, is the other turn in combo patrol. That one has a ton of units. You can take them out one by one and you can realistically score, I think, 12 victory points or more. So both of these secondary objectives are incredible in my book. And I think that you are going to need those victory points to win because your list is very squishy and there is no guarantee that your units are going to still be on the table beyond turn three or turn four, realistically. So giving you these victory points and these additional easy points to score, quote unquote easy, is going to be vital for you to stay in the game, even after getting tabled possibly. So yeah, take these into account whenever you build your list or you know your opponent, and thus your secondary objectives are either going to be very, very strong if you know exactly what you're doing with them, or you're not going to score any victory points or almost none, and you're going to have a horrible time. So please take the time to really consider which secondary objective is going to help you out here. And last but not least, we have the stratagems, and these ones are exactly what I expected. We have swift kills for one CP, your turn its units get an additional point of AP and anti-monster for up and anti-vehicle for up. This one is required for these combat patrols. They have no way to punch up. Your highest strength in this box is strength seven, and you're going to suffer against something like a Redemptor Dreadnought. That's just how it is. They are required. It feels bad because it takes up one of three slots for stratagems. And that sucks in my opinion. But it is what it is. And the same applies to Pheromonal Trace. It's exactly the same thing. It takes a slot away that I deem unnecessary. They could have just given uh, the Von Ryan Sleepers sticky objectives automatically. But it is what it is. So Pheromonal Trace for one CP gives your Von Ryan Sleepers sticky objectives. That's what it is. Simple as that. Easy to understand. Let's move on. Then we have Predators, not Prey. For 1 CP, uh, in your movement phase, on your charge phase, you pick 1 turn its unit from your army. And then until the end of the phase, models in your unit automatically pass desperate escape tests. And each time a model in your unit makes a move, it can move horizontally through models as if they were not there. So this one gives you a lot of movement options, no matter whether you want to leave combat or get into combat. And it's going to help to uh, kind of jump over units that are trying to protect maybe a important character model. And yeah, this one is going to be very important to kind of consider. Those stratagems are very, very simple. They are easy to understand. You're going to have an easy time to remember them. And in its entirety, this combat patrol is very, very simple. And it works because everything so far seems quite strong and this list needs it. But why is the White Dwarf combination between Strike Team Solarian and the new Insidious Infiltrators for the Turinids not the new ideal way to introduce new players to the Warmer 40k hobby? That explanation here is very simple. All of your units, as we go over them one by one, have the Infiltrators rule. They have Stealth and all those rules. And especially considering that you are going to consider Strike for Solarian as the opposing force, you're going to have Infiltrators on that side as well. So it's going to get a 
tug of war between the no man's land and where you position your stuff your opponent is going to try to zone you out of, of some objectives you're going to zone them out of, of some objectives and it's a completely different game from what warmer 40k usually looks like and from what a regular combat patrol game looks like these two lists have so much movement shenanigans and so many options when it comes to positioning counter positioning zoning that it's it's a valuable lesson to teach someone just not in the first game now when we look for example at the death shadow our neuro lictor here the rules are more or less identical to what they can do in full 40k you are getting all the defensive options all the movement options and the most important rule with neural disruption and psychological saboteur now the only rule missing is the one that grants you one additional cp whenever you kill a character this one was transferred to another model in this combo patrol we are going to talk about it in a second but overall the death shadow together with the enhancements is going to be a vital part of your army and it's going to do a lot of good stuff for you so Overall, I'm happy they kept Neural Disruption and Psychological Saboteur as they are going to be very important, especially once you trigger Shadow in the Warp. Very strong model. I am actually looking forward to using this one. Next up, we have the Lictor. The Lictor is basically the same stat line, the same stats, the same weapon, and so on as in full 40k. We are only losing one basic rule, which is called Pheromon Thrail. Once on your battle round, you can target one model with this ability with the Rapid Ingress Stratagem for 0 CP. I think this one would have been kind of cool to have, but it is what it is. Removing this one is not that big of a deal, but you still keep your feeder tendrils. Now, the Neural Lictor usually also has the feeder tendrils ability, and I'm not sure why they removed it, because yes, you could technically get multiple CP, but honestly, there are basically no combo patrols that run two characters. Now, we have boxes like the Tau combo patrol, but they are very far and few between, so giving both of them the feeder tendrils wouldn't have made that much of a difference and i could have not have bothered to just remove it from the neural lictor in my opinion but overall seeing the lictor still retain this ability is great and as you can see he's going to be your punchiest model in the of the bunch and you're getting all the other stuff fights first infiltrators lone operative stealth all this stuff and he's going to be also a very vital part of your army not because he's going to do a lot of shenanigans but because he's an honest model that wants to get in there and destroy space marines or whatever else that has two wounds and just rip them apart and last but not least we have the von ryan sleepers these ones have fights first infiltrators and stealth their weapon stat line is unchanged as well which is a little bit sad because their weapon stat line is probably the most problematic thing about them um, usually in full 40k at least they are used as distractions as infiltrators to move around uh, capture objectives maybe that are a little bit off limits now in this one they are your main kind of force to take out chaff and basic units like eldari guardian defenders or basic strike teams for the tau and all those units that are basic infantry now with the stratagem that gives you anti-vehicle and so on they can be very strong as well but you are going to be forced to run them in three squads of three that means that using your stratagems efficiently if on a bigger unit of von ryan sleepers for example is not going to be possible with this one so you're always going to be using your stratagems on a unit of three von ryan sleepers that is definitely something to consider and that is a potential downgrade for this one i wish they would have given the player a little bit more flexibility depending on whether the player wants to grant more weight on the objectives or on killing things that would have been a cool thing but that's sadly not how it works when it comes to the ability pouncing leap you can uh, target this one with a heroic intervention strategy for zero cp even if you've already used it that is a very good thing to have it is additional movement shenanigans for free and it is going to be very vital if you want to get them into melee to you know have them survive to have them uh, join combat to have them join into characters maybe even and all that good stuff so make use of that and the rest is basically exactly what you expect you're running nine of them so you better make use of them and familiarize yourself with pouncing leap and how to make the most out of the heroic intervention stratagem and that's it for this particular combo patrol my first impression on this one is kind of a little bit more positive and upbeat than i was whenever i saw this list now it doesn't change the list it is still a very boring list you're still running only three different data sheets which makes it an easy list to play but with all the infiltrators, with all the stealth and with the squishiness of this list, I don't deem it to be a very good beginner list. And this means that you are going to use this one as an advanced list, as an intermediate tutorial. That's how I see it. If you wanted to use it that way, you can also always use it 
for regular combo patrol and i think you're going to have some success with this one but this one is going to be a great intermediate combo patrol tutorial list that is going to teach a person who is new to warmer 40k who has maybe played two or three combo patrol games how to make the best use out of infiltrators how important positioning is and how proper positioning works with very squishy units that die immediately if you position them the wrong way and that i think is really cool to have in our repertoire of combat patrol boxes overall as i said i'm still a little bit more positive towards this one than i was previously and i think this one could be actually a lot of fun to run even though it's not going to be the strongest combo patrol list out there i think this one was going to have its merits but don't expect it to be too high on the power rankings tier list or something if you have any opinions of your own or questions drop them down in the comments below as i said if you're interested in the full review for this one i'm expecting to maybe if everything aligns to upload it next week so subscribe for that a strike team solarian full review is 100 coming next week so feel free to subscribe for that as well and give a thumbs up to show your interest and to support the channel it's free and it's easy other than that check out the links down in the description below if you want to support me just following me on social media helps a ton or if you want to go the extra mile supporting me on Ko-Fi or Patreon to maybe make Combat Patrol battle reports a possibility in the future, uh, is always appreciated and very, very helpful. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. I hope this one was insightful and I see you in the next one. Take care.